let's just fit this to screen so we can actually see a bit better. So to add our moss here, we could either just select the moss layer and just copy off a chunk of what we already have, um, which would be the fastest way, or we could uh, just you know remask the moss image and just adjust it to where it looks right. All right, so what I might do is just try to copy pieces just to save some time, and if it doesn't look right, we'll just uh, remake it. Okay, so I'm going to select the moss layer and just drag a selection maybe around the corner post here. I'm just going to copy that chunk of moss. Okay, do Control C and then we'll paste Control V. Alright, let's actually drag this up above the concrete layers. Alright, and we'll just drag it up onto the concrete here. Right, let's zoom in so we can see. Alright, turn our UVs back on. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of position it. Alright, like that. Let's do Control T on it. I'm just going to actually stretch it a little bit bigger, holding Shift on the corner. Just so they're more evenly covered. Okay. And do enter and then let's uh, turn off the UVs here and we'll save this out and just see if that looks like it's going to work. All right, let's jump back over just take a quick look. Okay so not too bad um, the color I think is still going to need to be uh, taken down a bit I think it's still a little too bright but I'll do that uh, after. I'm just looking at the coverage here to see if it kind of fits with the rest of what we have on the posts. And so let's uh, exit uh, active shade and just spin around here. Alright, so we have some pretty thick spots here, um, but it is thick on our post here, so that's probably okay. Um, and again, this really you know depends on how you want yours to look. Alright, so let's just do a render from maybe up here, and we'll see. Alright, active shade. Okay, so I think the coverage is good. Uh, the color's a little whack, but uh, we'll fix that in a second. Let's try it from this side. Okay, so I'm just going to exit that, and we'll just get in here a little closer. Okay, so let's just turn Active Shade on, and we'll go back over and just tweak the color of that, make it a little darker. Okay, so back to Photoshop here, and I'm just going to trim off what we don't need, so let's drag a selection around the concrete. Alright, invert it, Control shift i and delete. Alright, so I'm just going to drag this down so I can kind of see down here, and we use the same one, but it's it's looking a little uh, too bright, I think, and I might actually adjust it on all of the uh, the model. Alright, so for layer 2 here, the new moss, I'm just going to actually tweak this just slightly, so we'll do image adjustments, and maybe we'll use hue saturation here. Okay, so I'm just going to take the lightness down slightly on this, just to make it a little bit darker. It doesn't have to be much. Um, I'm going to combine it with this moss down here, and I think I'll tweak it as a uh, one layer in a second. But I'm just going to lower that down just a bit, okay? And let's take the saturation down slightly as well, just a tiny bit, okay? And we'll say okay, and then let's uh, select layer two and the moss layer with Control, and we'll do Control E. All right, combine it. Let's actually rename it moss, so we don't get mixed up. All right, and then we'll do an adjustment on this uh, whole layer. All right. So image adjustments, and we'll use hue saturation again. Okay, now I'm just going to darken it up because I think the moss is a little too bright green. Okay, but that'll depend on how it looks to you. So you might not want to do this. All right, so I'm just going to tone it down just a bit. Let's take the saturation down a little bit as well. All right, I might go for a slight bit more of a yellowish color. Okay, so. We'll just try this, so negative 10 on the hue, negative 8, negative 7, and we'll say okay. Alright, and we'll just save and see if it uh, looks alright. Okay, so a little bit more uh, yellow in there, as you can see. Right, so I'm just going to check this out. Just zoom out a bit. Okay, and I just want to make sure, you know, we get it right now, because once we move on, we're not going to be able to go back. Right, let's just check out this side. Alright, do it a little closer up. Okay, so I think that should work out just fine. So, we'll just do a save here. And we'll move on and actually start working on the metal now, finally. Okay, so let's just fit this back to screen. 
So we'll just open up another uh, texture here. I'm just going to start with this metal one. Open that up. Okay, and it has a hotspot on it, as you can see, and that's not usually ideal, but it's just going to be kind of like our base layer, so I'm not going to worry about it, but I am going to fix a few of these marks here. Okay, and for that I'm going to use the uh, spot healing brush. Alright, so we'll just paint over them quickly. And the spot healing brush is uh, awesome. Works super good on certain things and not so good on others, but uh, for this it should be fine, so we'll just go over stuff quickly. Alright, anything that sticks out. Let's get rid of that scrape there. Okay, and down here at the bottom, I'm not going to worry too much about these uh, marks. I'll just leave them. And uh, we'll just copy it like this. So, Control A and C. Just close it. Alright, paste it on. Control V. Turn your V's back on. Alright, we'll just move it up to the tank. And I'm just going to move it up uh, to try to remove some of that hot spot at the top. Okay, let's zoom in here. Okay, and it's a little short as you can uh, tell, so we're going to have to tile it, so let's just paste again, Control V. Alright, we'll just line this one up next to it. Alright, and I'm just going to do Control T on this and flip it horizontally. Alright, try to match the color somewhat in the center here. I might trim a piece of this off, I'm just going to move it over a bit. Alright, like that, and we'll say Enter. Let's get rid of the UVs here so we can see. Alright, so I'm just going to drag a selection around this end and just delete that piece. Delete. Okay, so the color's a little more even, and then we'll just patch out what we need to. All right, just gonna move it over slightly. Okay, and let's combine layer two and three together. Holding control, hit E. All right, and we'll just use the uh, spot healing brush here as well. Okay. And it might not work, but we'll, we'll see if it uh, hides that. And you can see a little weird. All right, so I'm just gonna go down a bit. Alright, let's actually use the uh, healing brush. Alright, so I'm just going to switch to that and we'll zoom in here. Alright, so if with this one I'm just going to alt-click over here and then just drag down. Alright, see if I can kind of blend the seam in a bit. Alright, let's just try to get rid of some of this. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to cover it up, but uh, just don't want the seam showing up right in the middle of our tank. Okay, and you can see we got some tiling marks here. So I'm just going to maybe paint out these guys here. Get rid of that. Let's get rid of this one. Alright, this one over here is going to show up over here as well. Alright, same with this guy. And I mean, it is going to be, you know, on the complete opposite side of the tank, so you probably really wouldn't notice with the same mark repeated, but. It's usually a good idea to try to get rid of anything that's totally noticeable. Okay, so let's turn the UVs back on. Alright, I'm just going to fit this back to screen. Alright, zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to chop off this end piece over here. Okay, and delete. Alright, so we'll just name this layer uh, maybe metal or tank base metal or something. Just so we know what it is. Okay, and let's turn our UVs off for a sec, and I'm just going to do a save here. We'll just check this out in Max quickly, um, just to see how it's looking. Okay, so there's our tank, I'm just going to change the angles. Exit uh, Active Shade, just move out a bit so we can see it. Alright, turn it back on. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, covering okay. Uh, resolution's okay, so we'll just go back and just add another layer on top of this. Okay, so this time I'm going to take Metal 2 here. This one's a little nasty looking, I'm just going to use this to get some uh, variation in the color again. And we're going to do this pretty much like we did the concrete, just build up multiple layers. Alright, so let's crop this first. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this big scratch along the top. And right, just take maybe the center portion of the map. Okay, maybe like that hit enter, and then I'm just going to get rid of a few of these marks with the uh, spot healing brush again. Alright, so we'll switch to that and just click on some of this stuff. Let's get rid of that guy. Some white specks, maybe. Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Just anything you see that kind of looks weird. 
that guy. Maybe that, that. Okay, and copy it. Control A and C. We'll just close it. Right, and paste it on. Control V. And we're gonna have to tile this one as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna move it up. Let's zoom in a bit. Alright, so we'll do Control T on this, and I'm gonna scale this up, which, like I mentioned earlier, isn't usually a good idea um, because the resolution is gonna, you know, lose quality. But um, we're gonna cover it up with another one, so I'm not worried too much about it. So we'll just stretch it so it fits the height of the tank. Alright, I might just move it down a bit. Right, let's go down a bit like that, maybe. And we'll hit enter, and then I'm just gonna recopy it. Control A and C, and paste, Control V. Alright, we'll fill in the other half there. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna just go into transform mode uh, with Control T and flip it horizontally. Alright, and let's hit enter. And I'm just gonna try to find a place on here that will be somewhat easy to patch this out, the seam. Alright, so I'm just gonna move it over like that. Okay, we'll combine them with Control E, and then we'll just try to fix this uh, seam here. Okay, I'm going to try the uh, spot healing brush again, but it might not work very good on this, but we'll see. Alright, so I'm just going to paint down. Now you can see it looks kind of uh, weird there, so I'm just going to undo that. Control Z, and let's try the actual healing brush instead. Alright, so we'll just Alt click. And this might not work very good on this texture either. Not too bad, we'll just go along. And you can take the brush down a little bit. Alright, so just all click and then just paint out the seam. Right, get rid of that. Okay, we got a tiling mark here again, so I'm just gonna click in the light part and just try to paint it out. I don't think you'd really notice it anyway, but uh, we'll just do it to be safe. Okay, we got some toweling scrapes. Um, let's zoom out. Alright, but I don't think you're really going to totally notice that. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in again, turn the UVs back on. And we also have to keep in mind here that this edge over here is going to match up with this one on the model. So you just want to make sure that, you know, it's kind of the same, uh, you know, tone and, and uh, color. Alright, so you don't have a big huge light spot over here and then a dark one over here because you're going to see that seam you know, really noticeably on the model. But this should work fine. Okay, so I'm just going to crop off the part I don't want. Alright, drag selection around. Invert it, Control shift i and delete it. Okay, and let's turn off the UVs. And for this one, I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Alright, which is going to darken it up quite a bit, as you can see. And I think I might take the opacity down as well. Alright, just slightly, maybe like 80 or 85%. I do want it to be fairly dark, but uh, not too crazy, so I'll just do it like that, and again, if it looks wrong to you, just, you know, make adjustments. Okay, so let's just call this one Tank Metal. It really doesn't matter what we call it. And let's just do a quick save, and right, check it out back in Max one more time. Okay, so not too bad so far. Uh, I think I'll add some rust to it uh, in a second, but let's do a save in here just in case we have a crash. Alright, go back to Photoshop and we'll just continue on to open up another map. Okay, so I'm just going to open up uh, this Rust 1 map. Okay, and it looks kind of nasty. We're just going to use a piece of it, so let's just copy it. Control A and C, and we'll close it, and I'm just going to paste it above the tank metal layer. Okay, and I think we'll have to tile this one as well, so let's just get it up there and we'll zoom in. Alright, turn our UVs back on. Okay, so I'm just going to scale it up a bit. Alright, holding shift. And again, you know, it's not always a good idea to scale them up, but uh, because we're changing the blend modes and the opacity, uh, it's not really going to be totally noticeable. Okay, so let's just take it down, and I'm just going to get rid of some of that uh, drippy looking stuff on the base. Alright, go a little taller maybe. Just want to make sure it covers the entire tank. Okay, maybe like that. 
and hit enter, and then we'll recopy it, control A and C, and paste it on. Alright, just fill up the other end here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do control T and just flip it horizontally. Alright, let's uh, just hit enter here and just get rid of the uh, UVs. Alright, so I'm just gonna move it around until it looks like it might be a, a good spot to try to patch out the seam. Okay, maybe like that. And then we'll combine them, holding control, hit E, and then we'll just try to fix the seam here. It's not that visible. Um, I'm just going to use the uh, healing brush for this, I think. Alright, so let's zoom in. Alright, so I'm just going to alt-click, and we'll just drag down it. Let's see if we can get rid of it. Alright, just undo that. You can take your time and you know get a better result. I'm making a bit of a mess. It's a little blurry, but uh, I think I'll just leave it for the sake of speed. Okay, and let's maybe try to take out some of this weird uh, mark here. All right, so I'm just going to alt-click over here and just see if I can quickly blend that in a bit better. All right, so turn the UVs back on, and let's just chop this off. Alright, so I'm just going to drag a selection around the tank again. Alright, invert it and delete it. Okay, so let's just move it over so we can see. And I'm going to add a layer mask to this as well. So let's zoom out again so I can see the whole thing. Okay, and let's turn UVs off. And I'm just going to go out and open up uh, one of our masks again. Alright, I'm going to use this mask to one. Okay, this was actually made using that rust image. All right, so just copy the whole thing. All right, close it, and we'll go to layer three and just hit add layer mask. Okay, back into the channels, turn on the uh, mask layer, and just paste Control V. Okay, we're gonna have to scale this one up a little bit. So let's do Control T, and we'll just shift drag it on the corner. All right, just so it fits pretty much the height we need. I'm just gonna drag it up like that. Okay, and let's go back to the layers and just click on our layer. Alright, there it is. Okay, so I just want some of this rusty stuff to show through. Alright, and I, I might, uh, I'm going to leave it on normal for the blend mode, but I might take the opacity down a little bit more, just so it's not so uh, intense. Okay, maybe even like that, maybe 65 or 70%. Should be fine. Alright, let's just give it a quick name, just call it uh, Tank Rust. Okay, and I'm going to open up another one. So we'll go out, open. Okay, and I'm going to open up my Rust 2 one. Alright, this one here. Alright, so let's just copy the whole thing. Control A and C. Paste it on. Okay, and this one we're going to have to tell as well. I'm just going to move it up here. Alright, you Control T. I'm just going to scale it down so the height's about this high as the, uh, the tank. We'll use the full height of it. Let's go a little bit bigger, maybe. I only want to have to tell it uh, twice, if possible. Okay, so we'll say uh, enter. Control A, C, and paste again. Alright, just to fill in the other side here. Alright, let's flip it around. So Control T, flip horizontal. Alright, I'm just going to move it over slightly. Alright, and enter. Just want to make sure we're covering the whole thing. Looks good. Alright, so let's combine them. Control E, and then we'll just get rid of some of this other stuff here. Alright, so I'm going to try to use the uh, spot healing brush again. See if it works okay on this. All right, I'm just going to get rid of some of these tiling marks, like these scrapes. Alright, you can see sometimes it doesn't work very good. Alright, so I'm just going to Control Z that. Alright, see if I can get rid of this one with it. Just take out any of these repeating marks that you might notice. Right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of these. 
I'm just going to do that one. Control Z. Okay, so for the big huge scrape here, we could either leave it on one side. Um, I'm just going to maybe use the patch tool here. So select that, and I'm just going to drag a selection around that scratch. Okay, and we'll just move it over here and see if it blends it in. Okay, not too bad, not perfect, but uh, it should be okay. Good enough. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of one of these here, too. Get rid of this piece. Okay, we are going to darken this one up anyway, so you're probably not really going to notice it. So we'll just do it quickly. Let's get rid of this tiling stuff up here. Alright, so that's probably even fine. And let's just change the blend mode here to multiply. Okay, which is going to take it down to a pretty dark color. I'm just going to fit this on the screen so I can see a bit better. Alright, I think that's too dark, so I'm just going to lower the uh, opacity down to maybe like 70 or 80%. Alright, maybe around 70, that should work. Looks okay. Alright, and let's just call it Tank Rust 2. Alright, and let's do a save. We'll just jump back over to Max and see how it looks. Okay, so, decent. Uh, we have a little ways yet to go, we're going to have to add some text and stuff, but uh, just for the base, it's not looking too bad. So we'll save again in here. And go back. Okay, so now that we have the metal in there, we'll just add the text to the side of the tank. Alright, before we do that, let's actually uh, include the uh, ambient inclusion map into the texture now. I never did do that. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the AO, and we'll copy it. Alright, and just close it. Okay, I'm going to paste it on top of the tank rust 2 layer. Control V. Alright, let's actually fit this to screen. And if you did end up rendering out your uh, ambient occlusion at 2K, um, just go into the uh, image size here and just make it 4096 by 4096 before you copy and paste it into your texture. Okay, just so it fits properly. Alright, so we'll paste it in and just change the uh, blending mode to multiply. Alright, and let's just save this and see how it looks on the model. Okay, and the difference should be pretty apparent when we get into Max here and when it re-renders. Okay, you can see it got quite a bit darker because now we're actually getting forced shadows onto the uh, model. And an AO can make a lot of difference in just the overall quality of how everything looks. Um, it actually looks quite a bit better. So we'll move on and just add the text up here on the tank. Alright, so I'm going to zoom in up there. And the reason I added the AMI inclusion now was just so I could see the two tank ridges here without having to turn the uh, UVs on and off. Alright, that'll just make uh, centering our text a little easier. Alright, so let's grab the text tool and just click in the middle somewhere. Okay, and let's open up the character uh, panel as well. Alright, so for the text I'm going to use Arial. Uh, you could use a different font if you want to. Uh, I also have mine set to black, so the uh, letters are a little thicker. Okay, I'm going to try it at 150 for the size, and I have my uh, spacing here set to 150 as well, just to space the letters out a bit. Okay, and I'm just going to type a generic sounding name here. Uh, I did Eagle Ridge on the original model. So I'm going to use that here as well, but um, you know, feel free to add any name you want. There's no real mystery behind this name, other than I thought maybe it sounded like you know a small town or something. Uh, I actually live on a mountain, and there's an area just down the road that's actually called Eagle Ridge, so that's where I got the name from. Uh, but you know, use whatever you want. Okay, so we'll just position it kind of underneath that first top ridge, and we want to leave some space here because I'm going to actually add the uh, population count in there in a minute. Okay. So to get it to look a little more, you know, beat down so it matches the quality of the uh, the tank, let's actually add a mask to this text layer. Okay, so I'm going to go down and add layer mask again, and we'll go back out to our texture source folder. And I'm just going to open up maybe the second mask here, mask 2. Alright, and we'll copy it, control A and C, close it, and then we'll just paste it into the channels here after we turn on our mask. Control V, paste it in, and then we'll just uh, move this up. Alright, I'm just going to try to break up the text there so the paint looks like it's, you know, peeling off and faded out. Alright, let's actually go back to our layers and just click on the text layer. Alright, I might actually change the blending mode of this layer to maybe soft light. Alright, just to take the intensity down a bit and then let's select our mask there and just move it around until we get it so it looks, you know, somewhat right. Alright, I don't really want the letters to be, you know, unlegible, but uh, I do want them to look, you know, old. 
Okay, so I'm just going to move it around maybe like that. That's probably fine. Okay, so we'll do that and let's save. And we'll jump back over to Max and just see how that looks. Okay, so not too bad for the size. Um, I'd like it to actually be on the front of the tower. So what I might do here is just exit uh, Active Shade for a second. Okay, and I'm just going to select the model and let's turn on Show Map Seam here. All right, just so we can see where our seams are. And our seam is actually over here on the side, so what I might do is just rotate the tank so I can have the uh, the text on the front and the seam on the back. Okay, so I'm going to drop down into Edit Poly here. Okay, we'll just say Hold Yes. Okay, it's going to screw our mapping up, but that's okay. It'll go back to normal when we go back up. So let's just go to Element. Okay, and I'm going to select just the tank, and we'll just rotate this. All right, so let's turn on Rotate, and I'm just going to spin it. Alright, let's hit show and result here. Alright, hit F2 so we can actually see. Alright, so there's the text there. It's a little hard to see. Alright, hopefully you can see this okay. So I just want to have it facing the front. Alright, let's turn off element for a sec. Alright, just going to rotate it back just slightly. Okay, turn it off, take a look. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but uh, I would assume, you know, if they were actually going to write on a real tank, they'd probably write it on the front. Makes sense, I guess. Okay, so let's just go back out here, and we'll just click up on the top of the stack there, and we can turn off Show Map Seam. Alright, on the UVs. Alright, let's find an angle, and just turn on Active Shade again, and see how it looks. Okay, so that's a bit better. At least you can read it now. Okay, so let's do a save here in Max. Jump back to Photoshop and we'll just add the population uh, text. So let's grab the text tool again and we'll just click somewhere down here. And I'm just going to type this quickly. So we'll just do pop or you can put population if you want to. And we'll just make up a random number. So I'm going to do 7,538. But you can use any number. Okay, and let's select the text. All right, just click and drag, select it, and we'll just make the size maybe 50 or 60. All right, I'm going to try 60. All right, then we'll just move it up and center it underneath our other text. All right, maybe right there. Okay, and we'll just add a layer mask to this layer as well. Okay, so we'll hit add layer mask, and then let's go out and just open up one again. I might just use the same one mask too. All right, we'll copy it again, Control A and C close it and then just go into the channels turn on the mask and paste control V and if you had wanted to you could actually have done both uh, text layers and then combine them and just mask them at the same time but uh, either way it doesn't matter All right, so I'm just going to move this around a bit alright let's actually go back to our layers and just select the text layer okay and let's also set the blending mode here to uh, soft light okay just like we did with these guys and then I'm just going to select the mask here and just move it around a bit until it uh, looks about right. Okay, we just want the paint to look like you know it's about the same age. So that's probably fine right there. Okay, so let's get rid of the selection. And we'll just do a save and just check it out in Max and see if the size is right. Alright, jump back over. Alright, take a look. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, I might move them down just a little bit. Okay, so let's select both layers holding control. I'm just going to move them down so they're more centered between the, the ridges. Alright, and let's save again. And check it out. Okay, so yeah, that's good. Alright, so let's save in Max here. And we'll just go back over and just uh, continue working. So let's just close our character panel here. We don't need it. And now that we have the text and the metal all laid in, we'll just add some uh, drip marks on the tank. Okay, so let's go back out and we'll open up this drip map here. All right, and let's just copy the whole thing. Control A and C, close it. And I'm just going to paste it above the uh, population layer. Control V. Okay, and let's just move it up. And I might tile this maybe a couple of times. Um, it'll depend on how long you want your uh, drip marks to be. But I'm going to do Control T here and just take it down a bit, holding Shift. Okay, maybe like that. 
and then we'll copy it again, Control A and C, and paste. And we'll just line it up next to it. Alright, let's flip it around, so we'll flip it horizontally. Hit enter, and then we'll just line this up somewhere where you won't really notice the, uh, the seam. Alright, I might just trim a little bit off of there. Just to kind of match the color a bit better. Okay, so delete it out. Alright, move it in place. Right, I'm just going to go over a little farther, I think. Alright, and we'll combine them. Holding control, hit E. We're just going to zoom in here and just use the uh, healing brush. Alright, so I'm just going to alt-click and just try to paint this out. We're going to make this uh, really dark anyway, so we don't need to worry about it too much. I'm just going to do that. And again. Okay, that's probably even fine there. Alright, so let's zoom back out. Alright, I'm just going to change the blending mode to multiply here for a second. Okay, that's going to get rid of most of the white, but you're still going to be able to see the dark uh, streaks. Okay, so before we go any further, I'm just going to do a save and see if the size looks right in max. Okay, and then we'll clean up the bottom here. Okay, so there they are up there, and they might need to be a little bit longer, so let's go back. Okay, let's change this back to uh, normal so we can see it. And I'm just going to do Control T here and uh, just scale it. Alright, just so it's a little bit farther down the tank. Alright, might go down to about the bottom ridge or so. Alright, let's just hit enter here for a sec. Turn our UVs on. Okay, I'm just going to position it a bit better. I just want the strip detail, you know, along the top edge. Okay, so we'll try that. Let's uh, turn the UVs off and we'll just change the mode back to multiply. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so I can see the whole thing at once and let's just do an adjustment on this. Okay, so I'm going to go image adjustments and we'll just do a levels adjustment here. Okay, I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to try to get rid of some of the bottom part and make the, uh, the stain marks a little more intense looking. Okay, so just so I can't see the seam, alright? And again, this will depend on your display. Um, if it still looks like it's there, just uh, adjust until you can't see it. Okay, so we'll just do something like this and say okay. Alright, and just to be safe, I'm going to add another mask to this layer. Okay, and we'll select it, and I'm just going to paint in it with a large, soft paintbrush and a black color. Okay, I'm just going to hit the bottom half of it just to make sure that no seam is uh, visible on the model. Okay, just like that, really quick. Okay, and then let's uh, save again and just check it out in Max. Okay, so we're getting it up there and that's where we want it. Um, we just want to look like it maybe leaked. So that's probably fine again if you want to make them longer or, you know, whatever you want to do. That's fine, you can. But uh, I'm going to move on and just add some along the bottom of the ridges here. Okay, so let's save again. And we'll go back and just add those uh, few along the ridges.